Okay, today's daf, Be'ezus Hashem, is daf Tzadik Aleph. And we will begin from, here we go, from Tzadik, uh, so Tzadik, uh, we're going to be, begin from Tzadik Amit Bey's Tanura Bona. Okay, again, uh, fascinating Gemaras that we are learning regarding uh, regarding controlling the economy in Eretz Yisrael and being honest in business. So let's see. Tanura Bonham, the rabbis taught, Eitzrei Peres, those that corner the market. In other words, they there are people who buy up all the fruit in the stores, all the produce, so that there's a shortage, and then they release it at higher prices. So people, there are people who can do that, monopolize. So those types of people, Umalve Beribis, or let's say someone who is a, is a loan shark, okay? He lends with high interest. Umaktine Eifa. And those that, um, those that, again, Maktine Eifa makes smaller the, the weights. You know, they cheat people with weights. Okay? Umafkiye Sha'arim. Those that monopolize and cause inflation. Okay, hi. Um, Alan, we just began with Sadiq Amabez by the Tanur Abanan, middle of the page. Alehen, all these pe type of people are evil people that cause the, the whole economy uh, to come apart in Israel. So God says, and then, Lehemar, Mosa Yavar HaChodesh, Nashbira, Sheva, Vashabas, Menifta Chabar, Lahaktin, Eif, Lahak, the Shekel, Aves, Moiznei, Mir. So these are the people that uh, cause uh, the economy to be become undone, or it's not a fair play. Uksiv, so what does God do? Nishba Hashem begoin Yaakov. God makes a swear in the in in Yaakov in the in the in the loftiness of of Yaakov in the name of Yaakov Avinu, who is the Ish Emes. Im Eshkach Lenefta Koma Asim. If I'll forget forever all their actions. So Oitre Paris. What what is an example? The Gemara is fascinating. Who is an example of a person? That would corner the market. In other words, they would buy up all the fruit on the on the open market, cause a shortage, and then slowly release release the the fruits at higher prices. Kagoin ma, who's that type of person? On Rabbi Yochanan, Rabbi Yochanan said names. Kagoin shapsai atzar peris. The shapsai, the 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 one that gathered the fruits. Shapsai. Now the Gemara is telling us, so so. Um, and it's not Lashon Hara, by the way. You just know forever that there was a name Shapsai who was uh, who was an evil person that uh, caused a lot of uh, uh, inflation, caused things to be uh, sold at higher prices. The Gemara says, Avu de Shmuel, the father of Shmuel, Mizavin lehi peir betara charfa besara charfa. He had a big, let's say he had a, a big farm and he would sell his fruits at the lower price during off season during the when it was not the season yet in other words he kept the prices at then so he basically flooded the market when the prices were yet low okay shmuel bray shmuel on his other hand harfa he waited he didn't open you know for business until the prices went up during the the main season when the prices were high and then he flooded the market with with fruits that were priced lower than the rest of the market and his aim was to bring down the price right so is uh, so they sent from here that's the tava da'ab midvra your father's idea was better than your idea you, Shmuel, you waited till every the price was up, and then you flooded the market. It didn't bring down the prices so much. My Tama, Tara de Ravach, Ravach. Once a price enters a higher market, and and a higher price gets set, it's very hard for the other. It's very hard to see it fall. It's almost like, you know, like you see in this neighborhood. You know, once the prices were high, even if bingo moved in, it didn't bring down so much the prices of food by other. By the other stores, it probably uh, you get free bags now. But the, that's the point. The Gemara says that best off to once the prices are low, keep the market uh, you know saturated so the prices remain low. Because once the prices edge up, it's hard to bring them down. Amar Rav, Rav said like this: You're allowed to 
you, if you have fruits to sell, you could hold out and wait to a better time to sell it. That's not called hoarding. You can't, that's not called hoarding uh, fruits. Oisa Odom as Kaba, your own uh, produce, Oitsu. You could store that and decide to bring it out at the right time. We're not forcing you to sell it when everybody else is selling it. You can decide to sell it at a later time if you think you could earn a better profit. So as the Gemara, Tanya Nami Hachi, we learned this as uh, Bryce like this. Ain't Oitsu and prayers, the Varm Shieshbem Chayin Nefesh. Things that are staples in life. The main staples of life, you can't store it. In other words, you can't buy them, again, you can't buy up all the, if, even if you could afford it, you cannot buy every item in the store. So you can, you can, you know, hold it uh, and, and, and store it and monopolize it. Now the Gemara says, what were the basic staples in Israel? During the, during the time of the Gemara, it's Kegon Yenos, wine. Wine was a major staple. Shmonim is oil, was a major staple. Uslosis and flour. Avo, but tavlin, kalman, upilpalin, certain spices, cumin and pepper, mutter. You're allowed to buy it if you could afford it. Buy everyone out of the store because, you know, if if people will hold, if you buy it, there's also risk. Nobody's going to buy it when you start releasing it because it's not such a staple of life. Again, when did we say that these things are also to do? In other words, you're not allowed to buy out the whole, all the stores of their product. If you're buying it from the stores, but if it's your own product, you don't have to release it into the market uh, right away. You can decide when to release it, then you can decide at a better time to get a better price for your produce. Mutter. A person is allowed to fill up his pantry, let's say, full of fruit in Eretz Yisrael, and you could fill it up for three years worth of produce. Now, you're not expecting a nuclear war. Why are you doing that? Because if it's Ereshvius, Shemitah, or Meitzeshvius, so there's three years in Israel where there's going to be a food shortage. And if you're going to think that you're not going to have enough food, you're allowed to fill up your pantry for three years worth of fruit, food during the fifth, sixth, because the food is not going to come back to the, to the, to the stores till Meitzeshvius, till the end of the eighth year. But if there's a hunger year, you're not allowed to buy out everything in the store. Why not? I feel a person should be careful not to even, you know, store even a little bit, uh, even things that are not staple. Because you're bringing in a curse in the prices. If you remember during COVID, uh, people were saying there's a shortage of tissue paper, and 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 then uh, of, of 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 there was a shortage of masks. So that brought the price of uh, masks, a box of masks, it was fifty dollars. I know they were selling it in shul. So this is ridiculous. So when a person has to be considerate, not to put the scare scare everybody by saying, "Oh, I'm I'm, I'm going to start hoarding uh, things," because that causes the 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 market to go up. It spooks the market. Amalei Rabbi Yosi Brachinin lefuga shamei Rabbi Yosi Brachinina told Fuga, Fuga is the name of his attendant, Puk Artsali Perish al go buy up enough fruit to store for three years. Er Shriyash, Shriyash, Shriyash. And like we said before, but during those three years, we allowed people to overstore food. So now the Gemara says like this, Tanra Bonan, the Bonan says like this, what about exporting stuff from Israel? Is that permitted? So the rabbi is taught, Ain might see an Paris marriage is roll, the varm shiesh bem chayin If it's not, if it's, if it's going to ruin the economy of Israel, you're not allowed to export these things because if you can't, if, if you're going to start exporting these things, and these are staple items, it's, it's uh, in Israel, you're not going to be able to find them. And that's not good. Kagoin, what are the staple items? Yain, yain, shmon, muslosis, wine, oil, and, and, and uh, flour. So you can't export these items from Israel to other places. Rabbi Huda ben Maseira mata biyain. Rabbi Huda ben Maseira says, wine we could export. Why? Because let there be a shortage of wine in Israel. It's good things because nation riot as the tifla. Wine is is causes a lot of uh, uh, people get addicted to wine and it causes drunkenness and, and 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 not such good things. So make it expensive and hard to get in Israel. So Rabbi Huda ben Maseira says, if you live in Israel, you're allowed to export wine. Just like you can't export from Israel to foreign places, you can't 
export even to Syria. Syria, in yeah. some times, has a, has is like Israel. So, but when 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 with regards to export, it has the din like chutz la'aretz, and you're not allowed to export these items from Eretz Yisrael to Syria. Rebbe Matir, we go to the Sadiq Alech Aleph, Ma'apircha, Ma'apircha, from the edge of Eretz Yisrael to the beginning of Syria. Those you can export items there because uh, apparently they're so close to each other. It's not considered a, a large export, you know, because they they. There's transport, import, export, very fast from one, one place to another. Tanura Bona. Ein mishtakrim be'eret Yisrael b'dvarim sh'yesh be'em chayin nefesh k'goin yeinah shmona slovs. A beautiful thing. When you go to Israel, the Gemara is saying that you, it should be like, you know, you go to the Havda Long Island, where, where, where the people that grow the fruit are the ones that are selling the fruit. So one is not allowed to be a wholesaler a broker wholesaler in Israel in these three in these three and these three areas wine oil and a wine oil and and uh and 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 flour you can't be a wholesaler in these items why because we want the people the producers to do their own selling so that keeps the prices low and since these things are staple items we want the producer to sell it so there was not allowed to be a wholesaler in these three items Amru all of our Rabloza ben Azariah, they said about Rabloza ben Azariah, he was a wholesaler in Israel with wine and oil. So why? Why was he a wholesaler? We just said that you're not allowed to be a wholesaler with these things. And says the Gemara, like, like, like wine, he held like Rabbi Yehuda ben Masera, that for wine, we want that there should be a shortage of wine. We want wine to be expensive. So we put a middleman as a broker, as a wholesaler in wine, to mark up the prices from the producers in order that the wine on the on the market should be expensive. So it should be difficult to obtain wine in Israel because wine is, again, it leads, if you make a wine so cheap, it's not good for society. B'Shemen, and the reason why he dealt in oil, there was so much oil around that even if Rabbi Loza ben Isaiah was a wholesaler, in, in oil, it did not cause any price rise in oil because there was just too much oil. And so that, that's why he would allow himself to be a wholesaler with wine and oil. Taner Abonim, the rabbis taught, You're not allowed to, you're not allowed to uh, broker down twice with eggs. What does that mean, broker down twice? Amamari Bamari, He says that there was an argument, Rav Shmuel, how to explain how to explain the brisa? So Chad Amar one explained the brisa a Chad tray that you're not allowed to double the eggs that what what used to cost one egg, what what you what used to pay for one egg, right? You have to now pay double the amount. That's what it that's what it says. You can't have a hundred percent markup on the eggs. The Chad Amar and others say Chad Amar and others say letagra letagra, tagra letagara. You're not allowed to uh, have two wholesalers with regarding eggs. One wholesaler you're allowed to have uh, with with eggs, but not two, uh, because that will cause an, an enormous price rise with eggs. But uh, and therefore eggs are somewhat of a staple. The Rashbam says it's not a big staple, so therefore you're allowed to have a nice profit margin on eggs. First of all. But you don't have you're not allowed to take too much of a profit margin on eggs. You can't like double, you know, you can't make a hundred percent markup on eggs. But uh and but you also, according to the other opinion, you can't have a double broker. You can't have one bro person buying the eggs from the whole from the producer and then selling it to another broker, because then that causes again uh eggs to be too expensive. And eggs is still uh, a very sort of like a staple item that we want to keep the price uh, down in Israel. Here we're talking about a market crash. Let's say you have a, um, a stock market crash. So are you allowed to, if, if you heard on Shabbos that the stock market crashed, right? And that affects you. So then are you allowed to pray on Shabbos for, for that's, you know, like say Tehillim? Like, 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 you know, if there's a war in Israel, you're saying Tehillim on Shabbos. So are you allowed to pray like that? On Shabbos, Masrian turn around. Masrian al prakmatia v'alfil b'Shabbos. Shuhuzal. If the if the business, if you heard 
about business having a, a crash on Shabbos, you're allowed to even pray on Shabbos and daven on Shabbos uh, 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 for, for, to, for Rachamim. Um, Rabbi Yochanan, Rabbi Yochanan said, Kigoyin, Rabbi Yochanan gives an example. A lot of Jews dealt with uh, flax linen clothing in Bavel. And if all of a sudden you hear that there's a crash in linen in, in linen clothing in Bavel, in, in, in flax in Bavel, the price uh, plummeted. Even on Shabbos, you're allowed to pray. And oil and wine, if you hear there's a price drop in oil and wine in wine worldwide, so in Eretz Yisrael, since that played a major role in the economy, even on Shabbos, you're allowed to have a, like a gathering of Tehillim to, to, to pray to God. Amr Rav Yosef, Rav Yosef explained, who dissolved a kom asara b'shita. That means that it went down nearly, uh, 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 nearly 40%, uh, 40, that means 10 went down to six. So let's say it was $10 a barrel, now it's like $6 a barrel. So that's the kind of crash that we're talking about. You know, if it drops by uh, by by ten percent, that's not a not enough of a drop to start davening on Shabbos. Taner Abanan, the rabbis taught, Ein yoitzim merits the chutz laaretz. One is not allowed to leave Eretz Yisrael to go to chutz laaretz, and simply because first of all, in Eretz Yisrael you have more mitzvahs, and also there is a mitzvah to to stay in Eretz Yisrael, to live in Eretz Yisrael. So once somebody's living in Israel, the Gemara says you're not allowed to leave Eretz Yisrael to chutz laaretz. But there's an exception. If the Ella im came, Amdu Susayim Basella, if the food is 100% inflation, normally you, you would get, you know, one saw, one measure of like food with a seller. And now the food prices went up and you get, uh, you, uh, you could only get, I'm sorry, you could only get two Susayim Basella. In other words, you used to get, uh, let's say, a half a seller, you, you, half, you would get, um, for for a half a like a, a half a seller, you would get a sasayim, a, a one saw, and now with a, with a seller, you need you get two saw. In other words, basically, there's hundred percent inflation. That's the point. So if there's a hundred percent inflation, then you're allowed to leave Eretz Yisrael to move to Chutz Laaretz. Amar Rab Shimon, Rab Shimon qualified that, and he said, "Emesai, when is that true?" Bizman likach. If if there's you can't even even if you had the money, you wouldn't be able to find it. In other words, it's very hard to find the food that you're looking for. Besides the inflation, it's very hard to find the the food items that you're looking for. If you do find, if you can find it, even, even if you have inflation where you're only getting one saw for a seller, not like not two saw for a seller, you're getting only just one saw a seller. So even if you have very high inflation, but if you want, it's, you know, there are people that can sell it to you. Lo yetze, you're not allowed to leave Israel. So it's not just inflation. It has to be inflation. And also, it's very hard to come by and purchase food. used to say, Elimelech, from the story of Rus, the father of Machlein and Chilion, where they, all three of them died, right? So Gedoyle Hadar Hoya, they weren't just plain people. They were leaders of the gener. They were Gedoyle Hadar, means that they were great people in in Chesed and, and in learning. Uparnose Hadar Hoya, and they were also leaders. So why did they die young? Because they went from Eretz Yisrael and went to live in Chutz Arts. Shinema, the Posik said, Vateem Kol Ira Alehem, but Timarna Hazois Nomi. When Nomi returned on foot, with Rus, the, the city was out there burying the, you know, attending the funeral of Boaz's wife, and everybody turned around. They saw Nomi with this, uh, you know, Goyesha looking lady, Rus, and they said, Hazois Nomi, is this Nomi coming back? My Hazois Nomi. What did you mean by this is Nomi? Amar Rabbi Yitzchak, Amru, the, all the people in the town said, Hazisim Nomi, you, you look at her. She She left us and left Israel to go to Chutz Laaretz. Ma also Look what happened to her, and that's what they said. Thus, Nami, this is what should happen to Avnami. We expect this to happen for somebody who gives up and leaves Eretz Yisrael. But Amar Rabbi Yitzchak, Rabbi Yitzchak said uh, regarding that day, the funeral of Boaz's wife. Rus The day that Rus came to Eretz Yisrael, the wife of Boaz passed away. 
Behind the Amr in shape, that's why people say, right when a person dies, already there's a replacement um, a replacement set in place. In other words, Boyaz lost his wife, and God set it up that the Rus was right there to become his next wife. And it's always that way. A person who's going through an issue, a, a, a hard time, should always know that the Rafua is always there. God always sets the, the, the Rafua even at the same time that a person's experiencing uh, pain. Omar Rabba Barav Huna Omar Rav. Rabba Rabba Huna said in the name of Rav, if you learn Shoiftim, there was a Shoifet called Iftzan. Iftzan is a boyas. Iftzan is the same boyas that we read about in Rus. So my Kamash what do we what do we need to know that? Well, Boyaz lost his wife, that we see in Rus. But how many children did Boyaz have with his wife? Doesn't say in Rus. But if you know that Ifson is Boyaz, then we know how many children Ifson had. And so then we know how many children Boyaz had. So, and it teaches you a ma massive uh, teaching over here, a fascinating teaching. Because, the Rabba Baravuna, the Amar Rabba Baravuna, Amar Rav. The Rav said, that, that really Ifzon had 60 children, 60 children, 30 boys and 30 girls. I don't know if it's from one wife or maybe from a few wives, but he had <laughs> but he had 60 children and he made uh, he made he made 120 parties for the children. You know, also the Sheva Brachas and everything like that is counted as one. So may of Esther Mishtar is also by the bottom. He made 120 parties for his children. And the Shnema, he had 30 boys and 30 girls, this Ifzan. He married off his daughters, and he married off his son. He brought in, he brought in daughter in laws, Menachutz. And Ifzan judged the Jewish people. He was the leader of the Jewish people seven years. So Ifzan, who is Bayaz, had 160 kids. So each one of them he made two parties. Echad beveis aviv, one in his father's house. Echad beveis, beechad beveis chamav, and one in his father-in-law's house. Anyway, uvekulam all his time that he made these uh, parties. In other words, he had a lot of chassidus to make. Loizimen es menoyach. He didn't invite this person called menoyach, the father of Shimshin, who was childless. Amar and he said, "Kinded akara b'may paraliv." He said, "This uh, this uh, sterile mule. How is he going to ever pay, pay me back?" In other words, they thought to himself, "Why am I inviting Menoyach to my simchas, my marriage of my kids, and marrying my kids, and marrying my kids?" And maybe it's too much for Menoyach. And and so he said, "You know, I can, he'll never be able to pay me back because he's never going to make children because he's childless." So basically, he was I don't know maybe sensitive not to invite Menoyach. To all these parties, but that backfired in 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 in, in Ifson's life. Tana of Kula Mesa Bachayev, they all died in his lifetime. So Boyaz, who is his son, had a had a sixty kids, and all sixty kids Leolenu passed away in his lifetime. Uh, Boyaz in Ifson, uh, who is Ifson, Boyaz lived to age a ripe old age of three hundred. So his kids, his kids uh, died in his lifetime, and yet, and yet. Uh, uh, even though he 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 didn't rely that he these kids are going to outlive him, when the time came at age three hundred, I think when his wife died, Boyas continued to marry and he married again Rus because you never know which child is going to survive. That's what people says. The Alpa Shitin, if in your life that you gave birth to sixty Shitti Lamalach, what what's going what are you going to gain from those sixty if they if you outlive them? Ichbel, double down and marry again, Chad, the Mashit and Zaras, that maybe you'll get that one child that's you know going to be more valuable, so to speak, than than the, the other 60. Okay, the Gemara continues. I'm just pointing out that the Chafetz Chaim, uh, from his first marriage, we don't know really too much about what happened to his kids from the first time he was married. Um, they didn't survive or their kids, you know, did not stay from, I think. Uh, but from his second marriage, he, he wasn't ready to get married a second time. And late in life, he got married a second time. He was forced into it. And he had uh, a one daughter. And from that daughter, we have uh, we have, we have have uh, descendants today from the Chafetz Chaim, from the Sachs family. And one son, Leilainen, didn't get married. 
um, but his wife and, and, and son are buried in Queens. Uh, they actually made it uh, during the war to the United States. Anyway, Elimelech, who married Naomi, which was his niece, because the, his, the father of Nami were all b'nei nachshem and eminodav. And my kamashmalon, what does it teach you? Shafilo mishi eshli zchus oveis ene oimedus loy b'shoshi yotzim eres v'zchus l'aretz. If someone who has the zchus of the fathers, it will not help him if he does the aver of leaving from Eretz Yisrael to chus l'aretz. The fact, despite the fact that Elimelech came from such a prestigious lineage, it did not save him because he did the big aver of leaving from Eretz Yisrael to chus l'aretz. Uh, another two more minutes, and then we'll stop. The name of Avram's mother, it's a schooler to know this name, is Asmasloi Bas Karnavoy. the Haman, the mother of Haman, had a similar name. Her 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 name was Amaslai, but her no, name was Bas Orvusi, the, the daughter of the raven. The Simonach, if you want to know, remember who had what, Tame Tame Tar Tar. The one, the 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 the, the Haman. Mother was named Bas Arvosi, the daughter of the raven, which is a tummy bird. And Avram Avinu's mother was named Amaslois, but her name was Bas Karnavoy. Karnavoy is, is, is a, is a uh, I'm sorry, Karnavoy is like uh, from sheep, a sheep, a, a Torah animal. Ime de David, the name of David Amalek's mother, it's not written in Tanakh, but we have to trust the Chazal that they knew. Notzva Bas Adol Shmoy. He made the Shimshon Sulapenit, Sulapinus. The mother of Shimshon Sulapinus, the Achdei uh, Nashian. The name of the sister was Nashian. These are Tanakh, and the Christians used to know, learn Tanakh, and they would ask the, the Jewish people, "Oh, can you tell me who Avram Avinu's mother? Can you tell me who David Amalek's mother? Who Shimshon's mother?" So Lamai Nafkemina, what's the difference? Lechuva Saminim. You have to know how to answer the Christians. That even there's a whole Torah of Alpeh. That tells us the answers to these questions. Uh, two more lines. The, this you didn't know. Ten years, uh, Avram Avinu was in prison. Three in Kuta and seven in Kardu. He said the opposite. They had seven in Kuta and six, three in Kardu. But ten years, Avram Avinu was in prison. If you want to know where Ur Kazim, where Avram Avinu was saved from being thrown into the fire, it is a place called Ivra Zeira Dekuta. So when if you pass that place in your vacation, you have to make a bracha, One more point. That day that Avram Avinu left the world, all the nations of the world, the Gedolim of the world, stand in a row of Amru, and they felt bad that Avram Avinu was passed away from the world. The world is lost. We go to Amit Beis. Not only did the world lose its, its leader, but the ship lost its captain because, because, because Avram Avinu uh, taught the world about leadership and also, he was about he was he was smart. He had charisma, and he also he had moral values. So therefore, the whole world was mourning the day that Avraham Avinu passed away. Okay, we're a little bit behind, but we'll catch up as Hashem tomorrow because it's a shorter daf.